Mrs. Adu from the Office of Social Studies. Last week in Social Studies, we talked about the democratic principles and how they were the foundation for the Constitution. This week, we're going to shift gears and we're actually going to be talking about some historical sources and we're going to make some claim, evidence, and put it together with some reasoning. Again, we're going to be talking about how the United States grew and changed. Making a claim. Outcome. You will conduct research about a historical event and gather relevant information from multiple sources in order to construct an explanation and description using a claim with evidence from multiple sources. As you can see, I showed relevant information, multiple sources, construct an explanation, claim, and evidence as words we needed to talk about. Relevant means knowledge having something to do with the matter being considered. So our relevant information has to do with whatever we're trying to answer. Multiple sources means more than one document. Construct an explanation means make a statement that makes something clear. Claim is the state as a fact. And evidence is material presented to prove the truth. So that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into claim and evidence. Let's take a minute and review claim, evidence, and reasoning, otherwise known as CER. A claim is a statement that you believe to be true that answers the question. It will usually only be one sentence in length. The claim does not include any explanation, reasoning, or evidence, so it should not include any transition words such as because. Evidence. The evidence is the information used to support the claim. It is the research you gather from your sources. Reasoning. The reasoning is the explanation of the why and how the evidence supports the claim. My claim is Dora the Explorer is an educational TV show for young children. Evidence 1. Dora often uses colors and numbers to communicate information to her audience. Evidence 2. The show uses simple words in English and Spanish to help tell the story. Next up, reasoning. Now it's time to put some reasoning to my evidence. Here we go. Dora the Explorer is an educational TV show for younger children. That's my claim. Dora often uses colors and numbers to communicate information to her audience. That's evidence. The use of color and numbers helps prepare kids for pre-K and kindergarten. Early exposure to this basic knowledge provides a solid foundation for school. That's reasoning. Also, the show uses simple words in English and Spanish to help tell the story. Evidence. The use of two languages helps bilingual speakers. Early exposure to multiple languages will help prepare kids for future language classes. That's my reasoning. There you go. Claim, evidence, reasoning all put together. When exploring a topic and conducting research, historians and social scientists try to capture information from different sources. Sometimes they conduct interviews, examine documents, explore maps, and even use math to examine the findings of scientists. Each source can provide valuable information. However, sometimes a source can mislead you with information that is not important or not related to what you've been looking for. Sometimes a source doesn't tell you the whole story. It is always important when looking at a source to ask yourself these valuable questions. Can I trust the source? And does this source have information that will help me answer my essential question? Remember to ask yourself these questions when researching about the United States and how it changed and grew as a new nation. Let's build some background. In its early years as a new nation, the United States underwent many important changes. 
the nation's borders changed as new lands were acquired. New ideas and innovations affected the way people made goods and conducted business. The population also changed as people came from around the world to live in the United States. Not all of these changes were positive as the institution of slavery took a stronger hold in large areas of the country and Native Americans were discriminated against. Native Americans were forced to give up their lands and move across the country. Let's look at the first source together. We will need a graphic organizer to record our claim and evidence and later for reasoning. You will need three sections. Look at the example here. Notice that my reasoning section is a lot larger because remember that's taking your claim and evidence, putting it together and making reasoning together with that. This can be done by folding your piece of paper in half and in half again, and the top two pieces could be your reasoning and then the claim could be on the left and the evidence can be on the right. The questions will help us organize our reasoning. We need to remember to think about how does this information from this source help me answer my essential question. United States boundaries. After gaining independence from Britain, the United States continued to expand its boundaries during the 1800s. Through various treaties, agreements with other countries, and purchases, the nation acquired territories that stretched across North America. Over time, settlers began traveling west through these lands along routes such as the Oregon Trail and the Santa Fe Trail. The trip was dangerous, but settlers felt that the reward of new land was worth the risk. Let's take a look at our source one, the growth of the United States in 1853. I can see that it starts right here with the original 13 states and controlled territories. Then the next date is 1783 with the Treaty of Paris. So I'm going to label that with a number two. The next new land that we got I can see is 1803. That's the third thing that happened. And then the next thing on our, our time period would be the 1818 right here seated by Great Britain. So I'm going to put a four here. And then the Florida session, which is down here, I'm going to write a five. And then all the way up here, if I look at my dates, this would be number six because this is 1842. And then next would be this Texas annexation, which would be number seven. And then the Oregon would be number eight. And then the Mexican session would be number nine. And on the last thing on this map is the Godazan which will be number 10. So I can see from my map how we grew and changed. So the first question that we want to answer on our paper is how does this map show the growth of the United States? So it does, it shows us how things are added and even where they were added. You can see that numbers one, two, three, four, they're all pretty close together and all on this side of the United States. But then the other side of the United States, the western side of the United States, for the most part, that came in later. We do have this outlier up here with Great Britain, but for the most part, we can see that the east was settled first, and then we started going across the United States heading west. What action shown on the map added the most land to the United States? So I can look at my different colors, and I would say that Two looks pretty big, nine looks pretty big, but three definitely looks the largest. So I can then, I'm gonna change my color for a second and I'm gonna circle this three. So three is the largest. So that is the Louisiana purchase. And then it asked me in what year it took place and that was 1803. And then the last question says, how can this source help you answer the question, how did the United States grow and change as a new nation? 
so we can see that we went from ha only being on the East Coast to filling up almost all of North America. Like that's a lot of North America that is now, that we've taken over and, or that we have control over. Okay, grab your graphic organizer and something to write with and let's put our claim. Based on that source, I'm going to say that the United States grew large. Go ahead and grab your pencil and either if you want to have the same claim as me, that's great. Or if you have your own claim, write your own claim down. Okay, let's add an evidence. Evidence that the United States grew very large was the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 added a lot of land. Can you add any more evidence that supports the claim if you did the same claim as me or whatever claim you did? Go ahead and add your evidence here. Our second source that we're going to use is a table of Industrial Revolution innovations. The Industrial Revolution was a period during the 1700s and 1800s in which people began to use machines rather than hand tools to manufacture goods. And the United States' new inventions during this time also influenced the way in which people farmed and conducted business. So I can see that this first row was going to be before the invention what the invention is, and then after the invention. So a farmer could till, let's turn over one acre of land in 24 hours. Then a steel plow was invented, and then a farmer could till one acre of land in five to six hours. That is a lot faster. Before a person could process one pound of cotton in a day, that means it was cleaned and ready to be sold. Once the cotton gin was invented, a person could process 50 pounds of cotton in one day. Wow, that is uh, incredible. Before, a weaver could produce two pieces of cloth in one week. Then the power loom was invented. Then a weaver could produce seven pieces of cloth in one week. So we can see that these inventions here made productivity a lot faster. So let's look at our questions. Question number one, how did the invention of the cotton gin affect cotton production? So I can come over here, the cotton gin is in the center, and I can see that before the cotton gin was done, it would take a person one pound for a whole day. But then after the cotton gin, they could get 50 pounds for a day. So that's 49 pounds more in one day. So the cotton gin definitely made production a lot faster. Second part of that question is, did the other inventions shown in the table have similar effects? Well, before the steel plow, they could only do one acre in 24 hours. After, they could do one in five to eight hours. So that is still a lot faster because I know eight can go in the 24 four times, so it's at least four times faster. And then a weaver could do two cloths in a week, and then afterwards they could do seven cloths in a week. So that's more than seven goes in to, two goes into seven six, three times, so at least three times as fast. So all the inventions made production a lot faster. Our second question, how might these inventions have affected business in the United States? Well, I would think that they could definitely have more business because they could do things a lot faster. People wouldn't have to wait as long so more people could, could have access to it. And I would think that probably the price of it would be cheaper because it's not as hard to make anymore. So our third question is, how can this source help answer the question, how did the United States grow and change as a new nation? Well, I think this shows us that they could provide more things to the people that lived here and they could provide more things to more people, which meant more people could live here. All right, let's go back to our graphic organizer. Now that we've looked at that source, our claim was the United States grew large. I still agree with that, but I want to add something to that. And 
could provide goods for more people. So now I'm going to add evidence of that. I'm going to say new inventions allowed more goods to be made faster. So now you need to think about your reasoning. Remember our Dora the Explorer example? Our claim was the United States grew larger and could provide more goods for more people. So far, those two evidence. Think if you can add any more evidence and then go ahead and put your reasoning together. Let's go back and look at our job today. It said you will conduct research about a historical event and gather relevant information from multiple sources in order to construct an explanation and description using a claim with evidence from multiple sources. We had two sources. We had both our um, map and our chart of the inventions. So those were multiple sources. Multiple mean, meant more than one. We made a claim. We provided evidence for our claim. And then we constructed an explanation or did reasoning. So we were successful with our job today. Thank you for joining me.